الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى today we're going to carry on the introduction to grammar the formation and development which grammar went through and the way that I plan to go through it inshallah ta'ala is in the following way the first stage a dawrul awwal in which grammar went through is called dawrul wad'i wa takween what does dawrul wad'i wa takween actually mean it means when grammar was placed when the foundations of grammar was being put and I already mentioned this before Dawr al wa takween we mentioned it in the first, 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 first lesson. And we said, this first hundred years was, what, was a Basri, pure Basri scholars. The Kufiyin, who we're going to speak about later, the scholars from Kufa, they had not yet come into the arena. Right at this moment, it's a hundred years of scholars of Basra. And we said it started from who? Abi Aswad al-Du'ali Up to who? Al-Khalil ibn Ahmad al-Farahidi 100 years Asr Abi Aswad Abi Aswad was which year? 69 Hijriya Up to Khalil ibn Ahmad al-Farahidi The teacher of Sheikh Sibawahi 175 Are we all together? The first person from Kufa who actually woke up and said, why are we not in the uh, arena? Why are we not talking about grammar? How did the people of Basra beat us to it? The first person who came with that was Abu Ja'far al-Ru'asi, al-Kufi. And that was how many years after? It was a hundred years after the people of Basra were in grammar, they were discussing grammar, they were talking about grammar, and they were dealing with the concepts of grammar. And what we said was the first hundred years of the people of Basra, we divided into two levels. How many levels? Two levels. We said, وَلَقَدْ اشْتَغَلَ فِي بِدِرَاسَةِ نَحْوِ طَبَقَتَانِ مِنْ أَعْلَامِ الطَّبَقَةِ الْأُولَى The first level is who? Three individuals. Three individuals were the first level of the first hundred. The first one is Nasr ibn Asim al-Layfiyu rahimahu Allah. Are we all together? The second one is Abd Rahman ibn Hurmuz. And the third one was Yahya ibn Ya'mar. Those are the three. And then after that came Abi Ishaq al Hadrami, Isa ibn Umar al Thaqafi, and then Abu Amr ibn al Ala. And you all know Abu Amr ibn al Ala, right? He's one of the Qurra, one of the Imams in Qiraat. Abu Amr ibn al Ala. And he was an Imam in the Arabic language. He was an Imam in the Arabic language. And it was an imam in what? It was an imam in qiraat. This hundred years, we were already spoken about it. There's no need to repeat it. We did that in the first lesson. This hundred years was who? All of these scholars were Basra. Abu Aswad was what? Abu Aswad was Basri. Now, brothers, the people of Kufa are going to come with full force. You have to understand this history because it's going to help you a lot when you read grammar books. The people of Kufa are behind a hundred years. They feel hurt. They feel betrayed. They feel let down. And they feel like they want to earn a name for themselves. So the rivalry started between them and the people of Basra. The second stage took place now, which is called Dawrun Numu. Dawrun Numu means brothers what? Dawr al-Numu now is that the foundation of grammar was just not put. No, now the grammar concepts are being nurtured. And there were distinct things that happened at this period of time. I want you to listen to what happened. Number one, the thinking process of the grammarians have changed now. Write this down, brothers. Their research and their thinking process in the Dawr al-Numu had changed. They started to think different. Guess why? 
Why did the thinking process change? Why did the research change? And the way that they researched issues, why did it change? Because there are two groups that are competing and competition brings about benefit. The first hundred years, because it was Basri, it was, they were taking it easy and everything was simple and it was good. All they had to do is just say issues here and there. But Dawrun Numu, the people of Basra, whatever they say, the people of Kufa will respond back to it and say, this is, it doesn't make sense. So they, they had to do thorough research. And they had to put down Qawa'id principles which came from a holistic deduction. It had to be tatabbu' al tam. Also, at this stage, they focused deeply on the last letters of the Arabic language. Fully focused on it. Ja'a zaydun. Ra'aytu zaydan. Marartu bi zaydin. Why is it changed? Why is they changing for? They they put it under they put it under the under, uh, they put it under the telescope and they look deep into it to see and magnify it. What is happening here? Also at this stage, what took place was a new science that was never heard or spoken about as a subject was now introduced, which is called what sarf. And the person who introduced it is right on this side of the board. His name is Mu'ad al-Harat. Mu'ad al-Harat is the father of Sarf. He's from Kufa side. You see what Kufa did? They said, okay. They thought outside the box. And they introduced a different science, a new science. And they came with what? Sarf. They came with what? Now we can't say that the Sarf was not present. It wasn't written in the hundred years of the people of Basra because he is present in some of the words and some of the speeches of Khalil Muhammad al-Farahidi and others and we were together brothers but as a science with its principles and the way it's organized they came up with it and we were together brothers the benefit also that's taking place here in this stage is called Dawrun Numu the benefit that's happening here brothers is the research the school of thought in grammar are now two. How many are they? Two. And what are the two? Basra and what? Kufa. Kufa fully rely on what, brothers? What did Kufa rely on? Kufa rely on what the Arabs say. If, the, if they hear the pure Bedouin Arabs whose language has not altered, their speech has not become tainted, They're, and they hear them speak, they say this is a way that the Arabs speak, and they, they, they say that's it, no problem. That's Arabic. Whereas the people of Basra, that's not their... It's called a yardstick. That's not their measuring scale. That's not. Where it is for the people of Kufa. Are we all together, brothers? The people of Kufa is based on qawa'id and principles. Am I making sense here? Am I making sense? So who's easier in terms of studying books of grammar? Generally, the people of Kufa are easier. The people of Kufa are generally easier to study when it comes to grammar than it is for you to study the people of Basra. Basra's grammar is a bit... It needs i'malu zihni. We'll speak about that some other time. So here is the second stage, it's called Dawru Numu. The grammar is now growing. Numu means what? Ah, it's growing, it's coming up. It's bearing fruits now, the tree is bearing fruits. Okay? This was just basic, putting the foundations down, putting the cement down, and now you're building it. The people of Kufa, they were three levels, and so are the people of Basra. But Basra are more in number. Why are they more in number? Because they, they've been in the game longer. Are we all together, brothers? It starts from the first one as Al-Akhfash. There are three Akhfash. Remember this all the time. Don't confuse it. 
This Akhfash here is the teacher of Khalil ibn Ahmed al-Farahidi. He is called Al-Akhfash al-Kabir. Al-Akhfash al-Kabir. Al-Akhfash al-Kabir is the big Akhfash. There's three Akhfash. This is the big one. He is the teacher of Khalil ibn Ahmed al-Farahidi. Am I making sense? And he is the teacher of Sibawahi. Am I making sense here? The Akhfash here is the teacher of Sibawahi. Always remember that. And then we have Al-Khalil ibn Ahmed al-Farahidi. Khalil ibn Ahmed al-Farahidi is the teacher of who? Sibawahi. And then we have Abu Abdurrahman Yunus ibn Habib. Abu Abdurrahman Yunus ibn Habib is the, is this, is the, is the uh, teacher of who? Sibawahi as well. Are you with me, brothers? And Abu Abdurrahman Yunus ibn Habib is who saw, who saw what? He's the successor of Khalil ibn Ahmed al-Farahidi. When Khalil ibn Ahmed died, the person who sat in his chair to teach in Basra was Abu Abdurrahman Yunus ibn Habib. Well, even Kisai, who is who's, who's here, is in Kufa. Kisai is where? He's in Kufa. He took from these two. He took from these two. When his grandma got criticized, Kisai's grandma got criticized as well. And then when he got criticized, he got up and he left. And then when he left, he came to Khalil ibn Ahmed al-Farahidi. And Khalil ibn Ahmed used to have a... He said to the people, can you tell me the most knowledgeable man in grammar? Kisai. And they said to him, yeah, go to Khalil. There's no one better than him. Then he went to Khalil. So the people of Kufa, who did they take from? So Kisai went. Kisai, when he went, he met Khalil. He said, Khalil, I want to ask you a question. Khalil said, hey, what's the question? He said, the question I have is, how did you learn all of this Arabic? How did you master it like this? And then he said, I learned it from the Bedouins. Basra, uh, Khalil is saying this. The Bedouins, they helped me. He said, really? He said, yes. They're on the outskirts of Kufa. And the outskirts of Mecca. Go to those people, you'll learn a lot from them. The people of Hudayl and the likes of them. He said, Jazakallah. He sat, he packed his bags. He didn't take much knowledge. He didn't take more knowledge from Khalil. He left and he was away for 10 years. And then he came back to meet Khalil and to see, hey, am I good? What do you think? Have I progressed? But when he got there, he saw that Khalil had passed away and who was sitting there? Abu Abdul Rahman Yunus ibn Habib. And then they had a conversation and Kisai wanted to prove Yunus that he doesn't know anything and then Yunus became aware that he's not good as Kisai. And then he said, you know what? This chair is yours, take it. You have the rights to teach from this minute onwards. Who is saying this? Yunus ibn Habib. Lakin Kisai left and went back to Kufa to teach his people. Here you have to understand, Sibawahi came. Sibawahi carried on the legacy of the Imams before him, like Khalil ibn Ahmed al farahidi He carried on the legacy of who? His teacher, Abu Abdullah, Abu Abdul Rahman, Yunus ibn Habib, he carried their legacy on. But this moment, there is a big friction between the Kufin and the there's a big friction between the Kufiyin and the what? The Basriyin. You have to realize. Kisai came back. He proved Abu Abdul Rahman Yunus ibn Habib that he knows more than him. He's back. He wants to bring honor back to his people that he left. Are we all together, brothers? So anyways, Abu Ja'far al-Ru'asi, he placed, he, he served it, but not much is mentioned about him a lot. Mu'ad ibn Harrat, I said he, he wrote Sarf. I want to stop here because this is one of the, this is the golden, this is the, one of the strongest periods of grammar uh, you have to look into. What happened at this time was Kisai, and the reason why he was called Kisai, by the way, is because Kisai went to Hajj with his garment. He didn't use the ihram. He actually took a cloak on and he went there. That's why Shatibi says in his Kitab, Hirzul Amani wa Tani, he says, وَأَمَّا عَلِيٌّ فَالْكِسَائِيُّ نَعْتُهُ لِمَا كَانَ فِي لِمَا كَانَ فِي الْإِحْرَابِ فِيهِ تَسَرْبَلَ He didn't wear no ihram. What did he wear? He, wear, he didn't wear ihram. He wore clothes. So they called him the, the cloak. Because he couldn't get a ihram to wear. So he just, whatever clothes he was wearing, he did it with hajj. He did hajj with that. That's why he was called al-kisai. Like al-kisai is... 
سابعة القراء أحد أئمة القراء الكبار he's from one of the قراء one of the seven قراء he's from them one and he's an imam in Arabic language على كل حال كسائي on the other, on, on the other side is who Basra on the other side is what Basra Basra who is the leader at this time look at the the level is the same who is on the who is on this Sibawayhi and who is here Kisai Kisai at this moment he's imam of the people of Kufa they look up to him and Sibawayhi is the imam of the people of like Kisai even though he's the imam of the people of Kufa because that's where he's from originally now he's originally Persian by the way he's Persian and he's Persian both of them are Persian men you see but they are both the imams of the the land that they were raised Basra and Kufa so what happened was two great imams people always like to see something happen between the two of them they want to see something who's the strongest you know this idea of her is always in people who's stronger in boxing let these two people fight let these people do this let... people are like that so anyways Siba Wahid rahimahullah he was called into Baghdad he, they told him to come to Baghdad they invited him over to Baghdad the scholars they differ who invited him and who told him to come and who, on whose invitation did he come so remember Baghdad was the capital of the Islamic government that's where the Islamic government is the Khilafatul Muslimin is in where who is in Baghdad at that time? Who lives in Baghdad at that moment? The Khalifa of the Muslims at that time was Harun al-Rashid. Who was, who was the right-hand man? Not right-hand man, who was the person who was always with Harun al-Rashid? And Imam al-Kisai, rahimahullah. Kisai's job was to look after the children of Harun al-Rashid. Back in those days, the leaders, they used to pick the best imam and they would say, can you discipline my child? Can you educate my child? Can you teach my child? Sah? But nowadays, the children of the leaders, they go to the western countries. But that time, it wasn't. Where do they go to? They get nurtured by scholars, Ahlul Ilm, and people of knowledge. That's where they get nurtured. So when they take over the position, they are people of great knowledge and religion. Ala kulli hal, no one... The story scholars they differ on who invited Kisai, who told him to come over. Uh, sorry, uh, Sibawahi. Who invited Sibawahi? There is a dispute. Some scholars they say um, Yahya ibn Khalid al Barmaki was the person who, in invitation, he came on. And some say, no, it's Harun al Rashid. Ibn Hisham al Ansari mentions the story in his Kitab, Mughni al Labib. Ala kulli hal, Sibawahi came to Baghdad came to Baghdad when he came to Baghdad and he landed he came into the palace of uh, Harun al-Rashid's palace but Harun wasn't in the gathering at that moment nor was Yahya ibn Khalid al-Barmaki was not there as well but the, there were two people who were there Khalaf al-Ahmar and al-Farra they opened the palace for Sibawi and they, in, they brought him in Khalaf al-Ahmar and al-Farra these are the two students of Kisai. They welcomed Harun and Sibawai into the building. They said, Sibawai, come in. So Sibawai, he entered. And when Sibawai sat down, Khalaf al-Ahmar, he said, I have questions to ask you, Sibawai. Can you answer it for me? So he asked him a question. And then Sibawai answered and he responded to the question. As soon as Sibawai responded to the question, Khalaf al-Ahmar said, Akhta'ta. You got it wrong. What you said is incorrect. It was a grammatical question. And then he said, I have a second question to ask you again. When he asked him the question, he said to Siba, he akhtata again. And then he did it a third time. He asked a third question. And he said to Siba, he akhtata, you did a mistake. And then Siba, he got angry. Siba, he got angry. And he said, you are a person of Bad manners. You have bad etiquette. Your akhlaq is very bad. He said, I am the people of, I'm the imam of the people of Basra. Who are you? Who are you? What are you? you? Al-Farra, 
he stood up and then he said, my friend here, in him is hastiness and he's a bit too sharp in his speech to say to you, Akhtata, and you are the Imam of Al Basra was not befitting. Can I ask you questions? I have three questions I want to ask you. So he asked the first question. When he asked the first question, see the way he answered it, he said to him, Aid al Nadara. Look at what you said again. It's a polite way of saying you got it wrong. But he wanted to avoid what Khalaf al Ahmar said. He didn't want to say it like that. He said, Aid al Nadara. Look at what you just said. See the way he said. He went quiet. He said, second question. He asked him the second question. And he said to him again, Aid al Nadara. Third question. Aid al Nadara. See the way he said to him, Uskuta. Both of you be silent. لا أكلمكما. I'm not going to talk to both of you guys anymore. حتى يخرج صاحبكما until your teacher, the person who educated you guys, comes out. Not long after that, Kisai came out. Kisai came out. Yahya bin Khalid al-Barmaki, and you know the whole everyone came out. They put Sibawi in the middle and Kisai. Now what you have to understand is. Kisai is in his territory. Where's Kisai? Kisai is in his territory. He's in his land. This is his land. And at those times, the way that debate would happen and the art of debate was if you were in your land and somebody came and visited you, you gave them the respect of saying, Do you want to start or shall I start? That was their way. So Kisai said to Sibawayhi, Kisai said to Sibawayhi, Shall I ask or do you want to? Do you want to ask me? Sibawai said, you ask. Ask the question that you have. Ask me whatever question you have. Kisai said, my question is the following sentence. Kuntu adhunnu anna al-aqrab ashaddu las'atan min al-zumburi fa'idha huwa hiya ama fa'idha huwa iyaha. Kuntu adhunnu. I used to think. I used to? I used to think, كنت أظن أن العقرب. I used to think that the scorpion أشد لسعة من الزنبوري. That it stung worse than the wasp. I used to believe that the scorpion it stings worse or more severe or excessive than the wasp. فإذا هو هي. And it is as I thought. Or, فَإِذَا هُوَ إِيَّاهَا How should I say it? Shall I say, فَإِذَا هُوَ هِيَا Or should I say, فَإِذَا هُوَ إِيَّاهَا This is what their question is. Okay. فَإِذَا هُوَ هِيَا أَمَا فَإِذَا هُوَ إِيَّاهَا They just want this here and here, إِيَّاهَا Which one is right, T-boy? Imam Ahlul Basra thought. He said, "Faida huwa hiya." That's right. He said, "What about the next?" Faida huwa iyaha. What do you think? He said, "It's wrong, incorrect." He said, "He said, ta." You did a mistake, T-boy. Now this ta is not like Farra al Khalaf al Ahmar because this is Imam Ahlul Kufa. And he says it to you, you can't say, who are you? Because it's the same level. So it hurts you away that statement. Now let me explain something to you, brothers, as a benefit. Okay? Maybe you may not understand it the first time. But to repeat it many times, you'll understand what the... You have to understand grammatically what's happening here. The word huwa, in the Arabic language, is a mubtada. And the Arabic language, the mubtada, requires a... Khabar. Just like a fi'l requires a fa'il. Does that make sense, brothers? Siba wayhi. The, qu- the whole dispute is the issue of idha al fujaiya. It's another mas'ala. Every time the word idha, what comes after it, is a jumla ismiya, mubtada and a khabar. Siba wayhi, according to him, that if there comes a mubtada, there has to come a khabar. For him, this is the khabar. Here is the khabar, which is correct. So for him, he's got a complete sentence. Khabar, 
And we said Allah khabar. But for him, this doesn't make sense. Why does it not make sense? Because this is a mubtada. Mubtada. Okay. And this is a what? It's a maf'ulun bi. Maf'ulun bi. So where's the khabar? Okay, that's one question. Where is he? Is the khabar there? No, it's not there. According to C boy, it's not there. That's one. Second issue is once you said maf'ulun bi, maf'ulun bi comes from a where? A fi'il and a fa'il had to be there. So where are they? Are we all together, brothers? Kisa'i, how does he respond to this now? The response of Kisa'i is, Huwa is a mubtada, I agree with you. See boy, I agree this is a mubtada. Iyaha is a maf'ulun bi. The fi'il form this maf'ulun bi is hidden. Which is what? Yusawiha. That's what the word is. Yusawiha, which is a fi'il mudariya, a present verb. Okay. And the damir takes it back to the fa'il. The question here is, where is the khabar? He said, the khabar is yusawiha, iyaha, all of it together are sitting in the position of a khabar. Does that make sense? The whole jumla fi'liya, the whole sentence of the fi'l that he just brought in there, and etc., all of them are sitting in the position of a khabar. Ala kulli hal, sibawayhi, the Quran supports sibawayhi's argument. The Quran never uses فَإِذَا هُوَ إِيَّهَا But the Quran uses فَإِذَا هُوَ هِيَا We find that in the Mus'haf. We've never seen the Quran use فَإِذَا هُوَ إِيَّهَا But we don't say it's wrong because he grammatically explained where everything is. But when we look at the Quran, it's in line with who? Sibawi. This issue got to the heart of Sibawi. When he said he got it wrong. But he's still holding on to hope. Maybe I've said it's right, wrong, wrong, and he's saying it's right. Then they both looked at Yahya ibn Khalid ibn al-Barmaki. Yahya ibn Khalid ibn al-Barmaki said, listen, if you, Imam Ahl al-Basra, you, Imam Ahl al-Kufa, both of you differ, who's going who's gonna to reconcile between you? Who's the judge? It has to be somebody like you guys. There's no one. The Ummah has, you're the biggest two men in the world when it comes to grammar. Right now we have. Who's going to reconcile between you? Kisa'i said, I know who's going to reconcile. Who's going to bring an answer to this issue? Hey, the Bedouins who are standing in front of the door. There are Bedouins right outside. Let's go to them and ask them. So they went, the Bedouins were brought in. When they were asked, فَإِذَا هُوَ إِيَّاهَا أَمَّا فَإِذَا هُوَ هِيَا Is it correct? They said, both are right. See, but he... His heart became tight. He said, he said to Harun al-Rashid, Harun, this man came from a long, far land, just give him some money and let him go. That pierced again in the heart of Sibawi. He hurt him a lot. He took his bags and he didn't even go where he came from, which was what? Basra. Where did he come from? He came from Basra, right? He did it. He felt so ashamed. He took all of his properties and his belongings and he went to Faris, Persia. When he went there, he died there. He stood at Al-Akhfash, this one. Couldn't tolerate the, 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 the thing that was just done to his teacher. Humiliation and the shame that was brought to his name. And at that time, Sibawai, when he came back, by the way, Sibawai died at 30, I think 9, depressed, stress killed him. Yeah, he killed him. He went into his room and locked himself in and he died from it. See, by way, he, at that time, he was in the middle of a writing of a book. He was writing it. And he was collecting it. Even when he came back, he started just to put things in there. Akhfash took that book. Went to Kufa. Went to Baghdad. Went to different lands and he challenged everybody and he beat them. And he brought glory back to the people of Basra. But when he, came, when he went there, he didn't meet... He didn't meet Kisai. Kisai had passed away as well. Pay attention here, brothers. Akhfash brought to people a book written by Sibawahi. People are like, who wrote this book? They're like, Sibawahi wrote this book. 
the man who lost? Because everybody now, a rumor was spread that the guy doesn't know no grammar. That was a rumor that was spread about, about Sima Wahi. And so what did he, what, when this book came out and everybody read it, they were like, whoa. He wrote this? It was, Allah brought his honor back again. And his honor. Well, the scholars, when they say the word Al-Kitab, the book, they mean Sima Wahi's Kitab. Kitab, Al-Kitab. It has no other name. It's just called Al-Kitab. The whole story, the whole story of what happened, of this issue, a scholar, he summarized it in lines of poetry. He said, يا ليته, لم يك... يا ليته لم يكن في أمره حكما وفجع ابن زياد كل منتحم من آله إذ غدا منه يفيض دما كفجعت ابن زياد كل منتحم من آله إذ غدا منه يفيض دما والنفس وأصبح وأصبحت كل وأصبحت بعده الأنفاس باكية في كل طرس كدمع سحى وانسجما وليس يخلو امرؤ من حاسد أظم لولا التنافس في الدنيا لما أظم والغبن في العلم أشجى محنة علمت وأبرح الناس شجوا عالما هضما The whole story You're always going to find خلافات and difference of opinion and issues like that happen between scholars but the truth of the matter is it didn't bring us except good Why? Because the scholars of grammar their dispute and differences actually brought into light a lot of issues that if they were to turn a blind eye We would never have known about it are, you, are we all together brothers? So alhamdulillah That these two madhabs came about Because they Critiqued and Checked on each other's works And scrutinized each other's works And it actually made grammar The Arabic grammar One of the best languages to ever study The way it's systematically broken into The way the Arabic grammar is broken into I mean, in university, I studied linguistics, English language, linguistics, okay? And I can reassure you, brothers, English does not make no sense. It doesn't. You think the person who wrote it was drunk when they made it. They put it together. It doesn't make sense. There's, they cannot explain some things to you why this is the case. Arabic language, they'll explain to you everything. Why this is this and how this is this. They'll explain everything to you. And they were given a interpretation for it. Because it's like maths. The way it breaks up. The way it goes into different charts and different levels. Inshallah ta'ala, next week we're going to do the next door. A door of thalith. The third. The third stage, inshallah ta'ala. Any mistake or shortcoming I might have come with is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallah, bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayh.